Hi, this is Ibarian X from The Candid Frame. One of the things we've talked about a lot when it comes to street photography is the idea of photographing people when they're in motion. Because when they're, when they're moving, whether they're walking, whether they're running, whether they're jumping, they're, or they're doing something physical, they typically make some interesting lines with respect to their bodies, their, their arms or their legs. Um, specifically when you're photographing people walking down the street, you're waiting for a moment where you have some good separation of the arms and the legs in order to provide a, a dynamic look to their shape within the context of the frame. But I was wondering, is it possible to make a good street photograph of someone who is just standing there, where they're just static, they're not necessarily doing anything dramatic. So I looked through the images that have been submitted to the Flickr pool, and I chose a few images here to sort of discuss what I would consider in attempting to make a good photograph of someone who's just standing. Here we have a shot by Mark Jackson. This was shot with a Fujifilm uh, X100, shot at 140th of a second at f2.8, ISO 640. Now, when I think about photographing someone standing, I typically am looking for something interesting about the, the person themselves, that they're a, sort of a character, or that there's something about the way that they're dressed that makes for an interesting photograph. But in this shot here, what we have is someone that looks like a security guard. Well, it is a security guard. Mark was kind enough to, to name the photo that. So the security guard is just wearing a dark uh, blazer, light khaki pants, and he's off in the distance here. So and all he's doing is standing there looking out the window. Now, his body language here is kind of interesting because he's leaning uh, against this post here and his legs are crossed. So graphically... Um, his body is, it's standing, but it's still doing something interesting. So graphically, it gives us, gives us something, but that alone is not going to make the photograph, right? So one of the things that I think about is, well, what's the environment like? What's the area surrounding my subject like? Because I'm going to be really dependent on those elements in order to make an interesting photograph. And what Mark's done here is he's biased the exposure, um, either because that's the way the camera's meter uh, was uh, metering the scene, or because he purposely did so. He's biasing the exposure for the highlights. So all the area beyond the window and immediately illuminated by the light coming into the building is illuminated by, uh, by the sunlight and re relegating every other area into shadow. So as a black and white image, you get this great exploration of tonality. You have bright whites, you have middle grays, and then you have blacks. And the, the existence of those create these very graphic shapes. There's a lot of repetition of pattern here, which is something that we, we've talked about in the past, that it's really good for, for building a really interesting composition. And, and the fact is that you get all these rectangles that pervade the entire photograph, both vertically and horizontally. So one of the reasons this shot works in terms of this subject standing is that Mark has built a composition in which the shapes and the tones that surround the subject are interesting. That's what pulled me into the shot. I mean, I love the the figure of the, of the security guard there that his presence there helps to make the shot because if he wasn't there, this would be a sort of an interesting composition in terms of just pattern, but there would be nothing to really sort of hook me in. Um, the character of the security card does that. But then again, if you're just taking a picture of the security card standing there without this other stuff there, that shot in and of itself wouldn't work. So you're kind of depending on both elements in order to make the shot happen. So even though this guy is standing, by paying careful attention to what else is happening in the frame, I think Mark here makes a successful shot in terms of having a subject that is just standing. Next, we have Rainer uh, Nowotny, and uh, this was shot with a Fuji X-T1 at 180th of a second at f5.6, ISO 1600. So here we have a man standing here uh, in, uh, I, I would assume, is Paris, uh, with this stroller there with his hand on his, uh, on, on his face. And again, He's just standing, and the only really interesting gesture we have, well, two interesting gestures. One is the way his hand comes to his face, 
and the gesture of him holding the stroller with the toddler there uh, in, in the space. So again, the man is just standing, but we do get a slight interesting gesture uh, in the way his body uh, exists within that, within that frame. And then we have all this other stuff that's surrounding him that provides a, a sense of place. Um, graphically, it's not as strong as the previous shot, but we get enough elements within the scene to provide a, a sense of place. I think what makes this image work as well as it does is, is the color. It looks like uh, Rainier may have been using the classic chrome feature of the, of the Fuji camera. It t tends to try and simulate the, the look of a Kodachrome film. It's a little higher contrast. Uh, the colors, especially the reds and the blues, can be a little punchier. But I think it's the color here that helps to make the image sort of interesting. The, the, the red and the orangey uh, coat and the blue of his jeans really is uh, a magnet for me. I mean, immediately gravitate towards the figure. It's not just the gesture. It's that color. And a lot of the other colors that are within the scene are fairly muted. We have the sort of the gray and sort of these, some yellows. And the cars are white and black. The sidewalk. Uh, is gray and and so everything else is fairly muted except for the genes of the people on the on the left, which serve as a nice counterpoint to the man's own genes within the, within the frame. But I think it's the combination of the color and and the contrast, the color contrast that's created in the shot that really makes for a really interesting interesting photograph. I particularly like the booties that are on the kid, that those yellow and black sort of tiger pattern uh, booties that the child has on. Again, it's all about about the color here. I think this image and the image that comes next is really going to show you how important it is to pay attention, not to not just to your subject, but how everything else in the frame is going to play a role in the success of the photograph. It's easy to just get so focused on your subject itself, even when they're providing you a really interesting gesture or body language as this subject here does and forget about everything else that's within the frame. Uh, I know street photography is very fast. Uh, things are changing very rapidly. So it's really hard to, to sort of absorb and uh, pay attention to all those elements. But you have to start training your, your eye to try to be as observant of that stuff as possible. And for me, when I'm photographing a scene, I'm sort of trying to anticipate a moment well before I've raised the camera to my eye. So if I'm walking down the street, I'm constantly evaluating the overall light, uh, the surroundings, the colors, the lighting, all of those things I'm constantly processing through my head as I'm walking down the street or if I'm just fixed there on a street corner letting the world pass by. Okay, here we have another shot made by Jeff Williams. This was shot with a Nikon D800 and 125th of a second at f5.6 ISO 500. So here we have this guy with his red shirt uh, on his phone, smoking a cigarette. And uh, his body language uh, and his expression are really great anchors for this, for this shot. Um, the angle of his arm and his hand all, all help to guide us to his face and his expression as he's about to uh, lift the cigarette to his mouth or pull it away from his mouth. So as in terms of the subject doing something interesting while he's standing there. I think that that works really well. I mean, we've seen that with the previous two shots that having someone, even though they're standing, doing something interesting with their arms or their legs is always really helpful because if you just have someone just standing there static, it makes creating an interesting photograph around them all the more difficult. Even if the surrounding is really interesting, Having that subject there that is completely static and sort of just flat puts the burden on everything else that's in the frame. So having some interesting body language while someone when is standing there is always going to be be a priority for me, regardless of how interesting the I may think the character may be. But what's serving as a nice counterpoint to this guy is the photographs on the right hand side of this what I think is a salon because of the emphasis on on hair and makeup and the mud pack. So you have these, you know, these six characters on the right-hand side that serve as an interesting counterpoint to this guy who's, you know, he's far from glamorous. He's just an ordinary guy uh, doing whatever he's doing. And then we have this woman working at this kiosk, uh, wearing a nice flowery, a flowery dress. So 
we have all these sort of human relationships that are serving as a contrast to to him. I don't know if he has any relationship with the woman on the left, but uh, there's an implied connection just because they exist within the context of of the frame. But it's the it's the it's those other characters that serve as uh, a really interesting uh, counterpoint to him because he's even with these characters that are on the right hand side, it's him who's the most interesting just because of the body language and uh, and the expression. And there's also that little what looks like a burn mark on his on his arm that makes me very curious about uh, him and his story. Um, like the previous image, color plays a big role here, right? I mean, that red of his shirt is a big magnet, and it draws us straight to him. It's kind of like the the jacket that the person in the previous shot was was wearing. Red is a a very strong magnet color, and it can draw viewers' attention. And here, it really it really helps to do that. And this this image uh, takes advantage of two of the things that we were talking about with the first two images, respectively. Uh, with respect to the second image, color plays a big role here. I mean, this image might look good as a, as a black and white shot as well, uh, but I think there's a, there's a lot of little colors here, like reds and blues and greens and yellows that pervade the entire frame, that create an overall nice uh, play of color throughout the frame. But like the first shot, and unlike the second shot, uh, there are a lot of vertical and horizontal, horizontal lines that pervade the entire composition. And that pattern, again, that repetition of pattern helps to result in a very strong sort of graphic image. I think that if you converted this image to a black and white and you lost the color, uh, it still would work well uh, because of those repeating patterns and those strong, strong graphical lines that pervade the entire composition. So um, if you look at the second image, here and you took away the the the, the color uh, i still think it would it would work uh fairly well you probably would have to do a little more dodging and burning to bring more attention to to him here but you would lose these these particular elements here in terms of the the color of the jacket the booties and it would feel like a very different image and i don't know if it would be as effective as it is as as it is with color, uh, this image I think would work just as well as black and white and color because of the the repeating patterns that pervert pervade the frame and the, the presence of these faces and this woman here serving as a counterpoint to him and the strong physical gesture of this guy's body language. So when you're when you're out there photographing, you see someone standing there. Um, think about uh, what you're photographing in a broader sense. Try to think about everything that you're, you're seeing through the viewfinder and see how it serves or doesn't serve what's happening with the subject. Having a person that's just standing there buys you a little t more time than if you're photographing someone walking towards you uh, down the street. So you have a, a little more time to sort of consider how you want to include or exclude elements from the frame in order to make a, a better and more interesting shot. So we hope you've liked that. If you want to join the Candid Frame community of photographers, all you have to do is uh, ask. Uh, you always, all you have to do is go to the Candid Frame, uh, ask to be added to the group, and I'll be glad to do it. It is not invitation only. I get some messages periodically from people who tell me that they can't get in because it's saying it's invitation only. Uh, just go to the Flickr page, do a search on the Candid Frame, ask to be added, and I'll be more than glad uh, to, to do it. Uh, we have thousands of people that are part of our community, and I'm real excited to take a look uh, regularly at the images that many of you are submitting. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, some people have asked, uh, I'm on Instagram and you can just do a search on eBody and X and uh, that's where you will find me. And uh, if you've not heard about The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a photography podcast that I've been doing for the past 10 years. It features conversations with the world's best emerging and established uh, photographers. Recently did an interview with uh, Andrea Francolini from Australia. Uh, he has uh, created a great reputation for himself, primarily photographing uh, sailing and yachting. But he started a project called My First School, in which he's providing uh, children in the country of Pakistan important fundamental resources to help their education. And it's a remarkable story of a photographer really making a difference beyond what he can do with a camera. And uh, you should definitely check it out. You can go to thecandidframe.com. And uh, you'll find us there. And if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe and spread the word. 
All right. Thanks again for joining us, and I'll see you next time.